shenanigans. 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 Truth, lies, shenanigans. Truth, lies, shenanigans. 
Shenanigans. Shenanigans. Truth, truth, lies, lies. Shenanigans. Truth, lies, shenanigans. Truth, lies. Good evening, my patient voters out there. This is Truth, Lies, Shenanigans, the live show for Sunday, November 4th, 2020. We're here. It happened. Last night was finally, he finally came and we're done. My name is Neo. I'll be your guide through tonight's Truth, Lies, Shenanigans surrounding this election. My co-host for tonight's show in the opposite corner, we have our journalist and educator, Miss Liz E. What's up? What's up, everyone? Happy Hump Day Wednesday, not Sunday Fun Day. Wednesday. Um, just so happy to see all you faces. We are onward and upward to new things. As you can see on my forehead, I voted, and it mattered. <laughs> and below me, our perspective from the north, Mr. Rob B. Happy Hump Day, everyone. Happy Counting Day. Much ado Ooh. about counting. Did I say Sunday? You did. Yeah. You did, son. Sunday, November 4th. <laughs> Wednesday, November 4th. Hey, you know, it's COVID days. You, know, you get your days mixed up. So. It's definitely a Blur's Day. Blur's Day. I love it. Love it. All right. So for today's show, it's our post-election show, talking first impressions, the latest situation, Trump's attempts to steal the election back, and we'll talk Arizona and the McCain effect. Also, Rob B. discusses the extremes between some congressional candidate candidates, and Lizzie tells us you better know exactly who you're voting for. 
i.e. Kanye West. <laughs> Remember, we are live just about everywhere. Our show streams live on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, and Twitter at TLS Live Show. And you can also watch us at TruthLiveShenanigans.com. Make sure you invite your friends to watch along because we want to get you all involved in the show. Share your comments and questions in our live feeds, and we'll have Gianni. Hey, Gianni. Hey, girl. Gianni hey, will be girl. sharing all of your comments and questions to the group. All right, and reminder, you can listen to us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, uh, Amazon Music. Just search or ask Google, Alexa, or Siri to simply play Truth, Lies, Shenanigans podcast. Okay, guys, we're going to start off with a quick fire question. Just need your initial reactions to this one. As most of us have had our eyes glued to the TV last night, praying not to see a repeat of 2016. I don't pray. <laughs> I want to ask you guys, what were your honest thoughts as you went to bed or woke up this morning and saw Trump leading or winning in all of the battleground states? Lizzie? That's not what I saw when I went to bed. Um, when I went to bed, Biden was up, I think it was 224, 213. So I went to bed like, okay, I went to bed about 3.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to give this to Coco Chanel, to everyone in the universe, all of my designer friends. But yeah, I, I went to bed knowing that, you know, he was not leading. I, I, I don't think I ever saw him leading last night, Rob. When I saw everything being so tight, I just kept thinking of uh, one of my favorite Will Ferrell movies uh, with Blades of Glory and Chaz Michael Michaels. It's mind bottling, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> mind bottling. You know, when things are so crazy, it gets your thoughts all trapped like in a bottle. It was just, that's how I felt. And that's how I still feel that it was, it's still so close and undetermined. Yeah. I mean, personally, I was blown, pissed, and I, I'm going to say I was frankly scared. If I'm being honest, because, you know, I, I was uh, telling Rob pre-show, I was like, I actually woke up early this morning wondering what in the hell are we going to do? Because I, I, I got to admit, I was a little scared. I, I was like, I, I can't do another another four years of this. Just can't do it. So let me ask the panel this. How did you spend election night? Like, what did you do election night? Did you eat something special? Did you decide to maybe take a little sip of something, something, pop a bottle here and there? Did you watch a scary did you watch a comedian? Like, what did you do last night? Harvey? Uh, pretty much the same thing I do every night. It uh, really, it's uh, the only thing that it, we, we are definitely feeling some anxiety internationally over whether or not the American people can get, get it right this time around. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's completely out of my control, out of my hands. So I just really went about my day-to-day -day business and this morning uh, was breathing a little bit easier when I saw that the numbers were favoring Biden. But the fact that it's still such a close race blows my mind with such a divisive figurehead running. Yeah. I mean, yeah, all that, I, mean I was up late. So I was up to about 1230, almost one. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to bed. And then I just... That's all I did. I, you know, I just sat there watching it on TikTok. I was, I was scrolling through some TikToks while I was watching the, the, the BS, the BS going on. So. <laughs> had a good day yesterday. I mean, um, for those of you who follow me on social media, I finally got my laptop back yesterday. So props to Apple for sending me a completely new device. So I consider that to be a good omen, a good omen. I'm like, okay, we're starting the day off right. Let's go. Let's keep this good vibe, this good energy going. Um, I cooked a feast. So my Bama bestie, Mike Winter, came over. I cooked um, some maple apple, maple apple salmon, um, some garlic mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. and some Brussels sprouts with duck confit. Um, we had tons of drinks. We danced. We watched everything on CNN. And so for me, it was there was a little bit of anxiety. But I think it was just because people were not really paying attention to they were looking at the states that we knew Trump was going to get. Kentucky, I think, was the first state that was called for Trump. People were like, oh, my God, here we go. I'm like, 
people in Kentucky were never going to vote for Biden. Like that's that's not a thing that was never on the blue state side. And so um, there were times where we were like, eh, OK, maybe, eh, maybe not. But I had a good day yesterday. Yeah. A good day. Yeah. And it looked, right. like it, paid off. looked like it paid off. Looks like we'll see. We'll see. All right. So. We're giving you a little taste, but let me tell you our viewers with Truth, Lies, and Shenanigans, our viewers and listeners, by the way, what Truth, Lies, and Shenanigans is all about. We will be sharing our truths and opinions with you, calling out the lies and pointing out the shenanigans going on. But most importantly on this show, we try to have fun with shenanigans of our own. But we do have one rule for the show, and it's no cussing. But we're going to have to figure out what the punishment is for the no cussing. So if you cuss... It's going to count for whatever the punishment is we decide on later. Yes. Who's going to count it? Who's going to count it? <laughs> I'll count it. <laughs> we'll go to tape. <laughs> we'll go to the tape. Yep. We got plenty of tape, too. All right, guys. It's time for our hot topics. Let's get right on into our hot topics. Truth, lies, shenanigans. What are we talking about? What are we going to talk about today? So the way this works, one of our hosts will start us off. They'll tell us if their topic is a truth, lie, shenanigans, and they'll tell you what's going on in the world. Then we'll talk about it until time is up. And our friend Gingy will drop in. Let us know that time is up. And we'll stop and go to our live audience questions and comments online where we'll bring Gianni in. You still there, Gianni? Hey Gianni in, and she'll share your comments and questions, what's going on, and then we'll talk about it a little bit more. But make sure you're talking to us. Once we're done, we're going to the next host and their topic. Topic. So, with the first topic, I'm going to take on the hottest of topics: this presidential election. Like I said, we've already started talking about it, but let's talk about this election. As of showtime. Biden only needs Arizona and Nevada to turn his way. And it looks like Arizona has been called by most or a few of the networks, meaning he really only needs Nevada at this point. But Pennsylvania and Georgia are still up for grabs. As we said earlier, last night was really worrisome as Trump had already taken Ohio, Florida, which were major battleground states. So how are we feeling, guys? Are we uh, pretty confident that uh, Trump is out? Agent Orange is done, Lizzie? <laughs> I mean, I think you have to speak it into existence. So yes, get out, Bama, get out. You about to lose your job. <laughs> you about to lose your job. <laughs> speak it, we gotta put it in the <laughs> That's right. He's gone. Get him out of there. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of shenanigans um, after the fact once, you know, Joe Biden is declared the winner, and we'll just deal with that as it comes. But I think it really says something that a lot of these states that turned a lot of these states, you know, that we that would typically vote Republican decided, listen, we are going to get our people out there to vote. We are going to give them a voice and we're going to let them speak. And so I appreciate that. Like, yes, I know a lot of people are disappointed that the numbers are very close. Um, but I think it says a lot that we got some states that we really didn't expect to get, you know, when this thing started. Yeah. That's true. Robbie. How are you feeling? It's, uh, yeah, it's to, to me, it, again, I just keep going back to the fact that this thing hasn't been decided already by the American people. Just to have this level of dysfunction for four years, uh, this level of just divisive tactics. And unfortunately, it seems to have really worked at galvanizing the people because he's still holding about half of the vote, which is just yeah. terrifying. But it definitely looks like it's going to be a blue Thursday, maybe a blue Wednesday if the counting gets in. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's encouraging to see that the winds of change appear to be blowing in. I mean, you made a good you made a really good point about, uh, you know, how many votes he got. Good Lord. I mean, sev almost 70 million votes for Trump. 
What in the hell? However, however, oh my gosh, I can't remember. There was an article that I read earlier today that uh, mentioned that Joe Biden, out of any president running in an election that, for the United the most, States, has gotten most the votes. most votes ever, ever. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, that is And a I lot. think it's something that we also need to take into account and mention, you know, there are about 370 million people who live in the United States, um, less than half of those people, less than half of the 370 million are voters. So the majority of people living here are not voting. So that's something we need to also take into account and yeah. correct as we move forward over the next four years. Yeah. Getting people to vote and then not talking about, so now everyone's kind of trying to figure out once again, like they do every four years, they're trying to figure out what is the electoral college. If we want to change the electoral college, it needs to start today, tomorrow, not in you know 2022, it needs to start, or 2024, it needs to start now. If that's something that we want to make an initiative, that we want to change as a part of our government, as a part of our electoral process, then we need to get on it now. I want to bring Johnny in real quick because I see some funny comments online. Johnny, what, what comments you got going on? Hey guys, so yes, so far we have, um, Jacqueline Robinson, she said, that's what Bernie Sanders pointed out. Voting should be compulsory. We also have Ayanna Brown. Um, she said he got the most votes because of Hellboy, not because he's better than Obama. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's hundred percent true. It Mike Winter says racism is strong. Nobody wants to be on the bottom rung. That's what this is about. Yeah. Totally agree with all those. Totally agree. Thank you, Gianni. I mean, so good. No, I was just going to say, um, you know, we talked about on Sunday's show a little bit about um, a lot of states, a lot of cities boarding up buildings in anticipation of the election, in anticipation of um, social or civil unrest, maybe some violence, maybe some riots. So far, it's been kind of quiet around the country. However, in Washington, D.C. overnight, um, unfortunately, there were three proud boys, if you will, that were stabbed in the city. Um, and allegedly, they were stabbed by members of Black Lives Matter. Um, and I, ironically, a part of one of the people that was injured in that particular incident was a Black woman who was arrested over the summer for defacing the Black Lives Matter mural down in Washington, D.C. Um, so that seems to be the only incident so far. Hopefully nothing else happens. Like I want everyone, regardless of, you know, whether, you know, Joe is officially announced president of the new POTUS or if something, you know, some bad miracle happens, which will make me e believe even less in the Bible and, you know, Trump wins the election. Regardless of what happens, I think we need to, you know, keep calm heads. Don't go out and be violent. Don't go out and, you know, destroy property. There are other ways to get your point across. This is still our country. These are still our states. These are still our cities. And we need to set a better example and be that change just in a personal and effective way, not in a destructive way. Yeah. Totally agree with all that. Now, let's get into Trump and his attempts to steal the election. He's come up with uh, multiple scenarios over the month about, months about exactly how he would do it. Basically contest, contest, contest the mail-in ballots and create uncertainty. And then Supreme Court, or he also suggests this. And all I'm asking is people go out to vote, go out to vote. And stop with this nonsense, because we're going to be counting ballots for the next two years. And I don't want to end up in the Supreme Court, and I don't want to go back to Congress either. Even though we have an advantage if we go back to Congress. Does everyone understand that? I think it's 26 to 22 or something, because it's counted one vote per state. So just to explain that real quick, there's this thing called a contingent election. So for example, 
um, if he were to hold up the election long enough or, or maybe dispute um, the, the votes through like December 15th, I think is when the electors vote, um, are supposed to vote, what can happen is it can then ha go to Congress if a decision isn't made. And if it goes to Congress, what happens is they get one vote per state, right? And so Congress votes one vote per state. And according to his calculations, he believes if it goes to Congress, he would win 26 to 22. Lizzie? Mm. Just for the record, for all of you Washingtonians out there, pay attention to that. One vote per state. D.C. is not a state. So yeah. that means we would Your not votes need a don't vote. Count. So mm. again, pay attention to what you are voting for. D.C. statehood, people. We need statehood in the District of Columbia. It also, it also eliminates the big cities in red states. So all those votes, like, for example, right now, Georgia is contested because of the Atlanta votes. They're still coming in. And then Michigan, of course, was contested it for a while until all the Detroit, the big city votes came in. So, you know, that one vote per state just eliminates all of those votes. So it potentially could have, like, you know, Michigan and Minnesota and the rest of them could have gone for Trump if we go to you know, one vote per state if, if we do go to Congress. So, I mean, they've been trying, he's been trying to steal this election <laughs> for months now. He, that's his whole plan. So right now, when he's talking about going to court, um, you know, that's what he's talking about. Rob, mm -hmm. But it also, it, go ahead, Rob, go ahead, Rob. Well, that's it. I mean, with the Supreme Court uh, appointees that they've had uh, over the administration, he's He's outlined it. He's absolutely outlined it. He's been calling it a fraudulent election already for weeks. So now the fact that he's not leading it, we're, we're definitely going to see some kind of appeal process. He's going to try to tie this up legally as much as possible. And unfortunately, with the, the uh, SCOTUS, uh, SCOTUS uh, appointees that they've gotten throughout the administration, they might be able to actually get some traction with it. And it's just so scary that it's been completely orchestrated and transparent. It's been in everyone's face, and it just the script has just kind of played along. It's going to be hard for them to for for Trump to fight these votes. It's just further proof of you know the type of demon seed that America elected in 2016. <laughs> you know seed. we have elections. We have elections every or general elections for president every four years in this country. So there's always two people on the ballot. There's a winner and a loser. Never before have we seen a loser act like this. Never have we seen a loser try to challenge the democratic process because he's pissed that it's not going his way. Like you go into this game knowing the rules of the game, knowing how it's played, and knowing what the potential outcome could be. In 2016, he wasn't calling for all of this ruckus. He wasn't, you know, making this kerfuffle because he won in the end. Kerfuffle. That's the name. So when things are going in his favor, he's fine. But now that he can't get his way, it's like, oh, it's rigged. I'm going to, you know, file a lawsuit. They should stop counting the ballots. When have we ever stopped counting ballots? All right. That, that's Remember, absolutely ridiculous. We have plus million people in this country. All of those ballots are not going to be counted in 12 hours. Now, to clarify, so why he did say stop voting in, in, his, in his speech. He specifically said he'd like to stop the voting, but he also the way he it, said it was to insinuate stop counting. But mm -hmm. he also, you know, again, he's not very well educated, even though he went to an Ivy League school. He also tweeted yesterday something about the polls, the election polls, but spelled it P-O-L-E-S. -E -E so, I mean, <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, he declared that he won last night. Ridiculous. 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 Yeah. yeah, matter of fact, he's going to try to make a play at going, um, he's still going to try to make a play at going to court over Michigan and Pennsylvania. Um, but for the Supreme Court to get involved, one of them has to be like determinative. Like, for example, it comes down to Pennsylvania. And so now the Supreme Court has to kind of make a decision. Um, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case because right now, like I said, all he really needs is Nevada 
but it looks like he might take Pennsylvania and Georgia, actually. Um, I mean, like you said, he he's challenging Michigan now. You know, he's filed suit to challenge Michigan. There was something that came across the wire maybe an hour ago that they were challenging the votes in Arizona, claiming yeah, that people were that. voting with Sharpies. Yeah. And so those votes shouldn't count. Like, you know, he's just pulling stuff <laughs> out of his behind right now. <laughs> yeah, the, the attorney well general, I heard her yeah, say that, just laugh that off. Yeah. It, it's ridiculous. This this is how you expect a ten year old to act. Right. That's when they very true. Very true. Not not, you know, a seventy plus year old president leader of the free world. Any last thoughts before I go to the uh audience, Bobby? No, no, let's hear from the audience. Okay. Cool. Gianni, what's going on online? Hey guys. Okay, so people are saying that he always says the evil part out loud. Um, that's what Jacqueline Robinson says. That's true. He does. <laughs> um, Marjorie said, I have faith that it isn't going that far. 45 is losing GOP. No one wants to go down with this crazy train. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point, Marjorie. That's a really good point. Yes. Yeah. I Ayana also says, Black folks go from picking cotton to picking presidents. Black votes, are, black votes are carrying this election. Let's go. Let's go. Actually, yeah. And if you look at Atlanta, particularly who is, which is predominantly black, um, they're actually yeah. where the last few votes are left to be counted, and they've been narrowing the gap um, for Georgia, which may they may actually Atlanta may actually bring Georgia in. So. I mean, right. I'm not sure if Ernest Cooper is watching, but if you're watching Ern, get your folks in Atlanta together. Gianni, get out there, get them together. You know, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> All, right. All right. Um. So let's talk briefly about uh, before we close out the election. I wanted to talk briefly about um this Arizona shift, this shift where Arizona is turned. Uh, blue, where it's been predominantly red for a long, long time. Now, it's no secret that Trump hated, hated Senator John McCain from Arizona, even bad-mouthing him posthumously after he was dead. Now, Arizona had been a stronghold for, like I said, forever, but um, you know, this has become now b vital to Biden's potential win. So my question to you guys, right, is this revenge from the grave for john mccain <laughs> <laughs> is john mccain coming from the grave and getting his revenge on trump <laughs> but before we do I, I real quick i want to show let, let me share with the viewers some of the crap that trump has actually said about john mccain and i want to let everyone know he died what two years ago was it two years ago three years ago from a brain tumor and after he died from a brain tumor, he was still about bad mouthing. So I have to be honest, I've never liked him much. Has it been for me? And this is after, I've he was saying this after really he died. Probably never will, but there are certain reasons for it and I'll tell you, uh, and I do this to save a little time with the press later on. John McCain received a, uh, a fake and phony dossier. Do you hear about the dossier? It was paid for by crooked Hillary Clinton, right? And John McCain got it. He got it. And what did he do? Didn't call me. He turned it over to the FBI, hoping to put me in jeopardy. When he finally had the chance to do it, he voted against repeal and replace. He voted against Obamacare. Good morning. Remember, thumbs down. Yep, he voted against Obamacare. I endorsed Obamacare. him at his request. And I gave him the kind of funeral that he wanted, which as president, lie. I had to approve. That's a lie. That is a lie. I didn't get thank you. That's OK. He didn't get a thank you from John McCain. He's but dead. I wasn't a fan of dead. <laughs> now what we could say is now we're all set. I don't think I have to answer that question. But the press keeps, what do you think of McCain? What do you think? Yeah, anyway, Not so that gives you an idea of just how horrible a guy he was. So is this John McCain getting his uh, revenge? You guys? Uh, 
again, another reason for me to dislike Donald J. Trump is, you know, I'm really not a fan of John McCain. Um, really? But, no, I'm not a fan of John McCain. I mean, John McCain was against, you know, having Martin Luther King's birthday be a holiday in I Arizona that. for me. Years. Um, now he came, you know, full circle, and he eventually apologized for that. But it's taken a while for John McCain to catch up to the progressive movement. But I, as a, as a daughter of, you know, a veteran, a World War II veteran, um, after John McCain, even before he died, but especially after he died, all of these knocks against his character, against his service, were highly offensive to me. So then I had to get out there and start defending John McCain. And that was so like. <laughs> who I didn't like. Mm -hmm. as a um, and I certainly don't like his daughter. Megan, if you're watching, no, girl, I don't like you. But um, <laughs> I think it's totally disrespectful for a president to give that type of speech. It is. No one is at all really cares about you liking him you never being a fan of his or whatever the things that he has said about john mccain and his service are atrocious especially from someone again who was a draft dodger okay yep. who draft dodged four different times my father served my father's brother served i have other family members that have served who are still in iraq but yet this in effort y'all not gonna catch me cursing <laughs> this can sit up there on his pedestal and knock a celebrated POW veteran? How dare, how dare you? But remember, he did the same thing with John Lewis. When asked about how he would feel, how he feels about John Lewis, after John Lewis died, the first thing he said was, well, he didn't come to my inauguration. So everything is personal for Trump. It's not country first. Right. It's not about, it's not about the country, it's about him me 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 and that's mm -hmm. we cannot have that we nope. cannot have that so yes i think this is john mccain reaching up for the grave <laughs> and snatching that orange wig off his head 100 <laughs> percent. robbie what do you think it's uh i've said it uh, many times before uh trump lacks decorum in every way shape or form uh and that's if you don't have anything nice to say personally at least from a professional and political standpoint there was enough that he could have said to honor and respect him. Do I think that it's from beyond the grave? Yeah, don't really buy into that. But <laughs> karma, karma, you reap what you sow. If you put that bad energy out there, you've put that bad mojo out there, it's gonna come back to you in some way, shape or form. Put the good stuff out there and that will also come back to you in some way, shape or form. And I'm hoping that tonight, tomorrow, that will be Trump's comeuppance. It'll come up with a legitimate loss that he can't wipe away. I, I agree with you as far as like, uh, it's not necessarily him from the grave, but with that being said, <laughs> with that being said, I mean, I, I agree with you on karma because I'm certain that those people in Arizona were pissed off with the way he treated McCain because they loved McCain in Arizona, absolutely loved McCain in Arizona. And so I think even if it's not him coming back from the grave, it's his legacy that's biting Trump in the, in the, in the ass. But also, I think a lot of people in Arizona, so Trump was the one who started up this conversation about John McCain being a rhino, which is which means Republican in name only. Mm. Um, and that I think that offended a lot of people in Arizona as well, especially if you consider Donald Trump is not a real Republican. Donald Trump has, you know, vacillated back and forth between the parties. He was a registered Democrat at one point. He has given money to the Democratic campaign. So if there's anyone who is the president of the Rhino Association in this country, it's Donald J. Trump. But like you said, you know, people in Arizona, he, John McCain was their hero. Mm -hmm. And for you to belittle him and talk, you know, ill about him, that was never going to go over. And then you had Cindy McCain, mm -hmm. John McCain's widow. Mm -hmm. she, came, she came out and endorsed Biden. Yep. Megan didn't really, and that's why we don't like you, girl. But your mama did. did. Not really. Megan, you know, Megan talks a lot of BS. She does. <sighs> don't get me started. But Cindy came out and endorsed Biden and again reminded people of how awful this sitting president was 
towards her husband, even in his dying, his final moments. Yeah. He couldn't show compassion. <laughs> and so, yeah, Arizona, Arizona's like, you know, deuces, deuces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hope Arizona continues to go this route so that we can we can count on it for, it for future elections. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> but, but it'd be yeah, because you know I don't know. But anyway, I'm just glad I'm glad Arizona did the right thing, and yeah, I'm I'm glad that it's looking right because yeah, and, and I'm pretty I I tend to be pretty bipartisan, although you know I'm a registered Democrat. I try to be as bipartisan as possible, but Trump made that impossible i could not even consider a republican candidate because of trump and it really bothered me it really bothered me so i'm glad that uh glad the potential is over look at them counting those ballots get it y'all that's right they're working hard and see you got the news in there i mean trump's not gonna be able to say anything i think i and i'm pretty sure that they're cnn and the rest of them are up in there on purpose making it very clear so that Trump can't say nothing. <laughs> but also, right. it's a part of the transparency of this it is. democracy. Like, this isn't anything new. And that's no, it takes get. days to, to certify elections. Days. Mm -hmm. It's just that news people, news, news organizations tend to call them. They, they call the, because they look at the number of votes and the number of outstanding votes and things like that. But you can't certify an election for days. Normal. All right, Gianni. Let's see what we got on happening online. What kind of comments and questions do we have? Any comments or questions? Yes. Um, Kevin Thaxton said that those folks are in a cult. Huh. Um, yes. <laughs> I agree. Um, Jose says, I'm sorry, but has he ever been tested for insanity? Speaking about Trump. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. I, mean, I know he has a disorder of uh, narcissism. I, narcissism is definitely a disorder he's been... Uh, Diagnosed oh, with. Yeah. He's a little lying problem, you know. He's a little lying problem. All Not that disorders. <laughs> a huge lying problem. Um, Jackson <laughs> Robinson said, as an added bonus, McCain requested that President Obama eulogize. Oh yeah, that was great. Yes. I forgot about that. <laughs> that that was yeah, that was that was great. I I loved that McCain did that. I, I know Lizzie doesn't like McCain, but I actually liked McCain. Yeah. And now, now I did. I, I didn't like some of his policies, but I think he was catering to his base at the time, to some of the things. But I think he changed over time too. No, I, and yes, I agree. I do think he changed, over, and I I do appreciate people in their maturation process. Yeah. Um. But for the majority of my life, before he decided to get on the good foot, John McCain was not, you know, a friend of ours, if you will. He was. But but even even if. Even if he hadn't matured or changed some of his viewpoints on certain things, I would never speak ill about him in death the way Donald Should J. Never Trump happen. did. I would, I would never do that, especially as a leader. Yeah, I, I would never do that. Anything else, Johnny? That's exactly it, Liz. Oh, as, as a leader, you should never speak in that fashion, especially not when it's a public address. If that's how you feel within your the confines of your circle, then express that view. But when you are speaking publicly and you are a figurehead, yeah, you, you have to lead, and that's not yeah. his forte. And, he, and these were these were personal feelings. It wasn't as if you know John McCain was like a warlord or something in this country. Mm -hmm. These were personal feelings, and you you have to leave that to the side. Yeah. And he doesn't understand that as a leader. Yeah, or he didn't care. All right, Johnny, any, one last comment, one last comment. What do we got? Yeah, um, Marjorie said, Trump is an ass. It's a shame that we are even talking about him. He's such a loser. <laughs> Marjorie, Marjorie. Marjorie. Yep. All, right. <laughs> All right, thanks, Johnny. All right, let's, uh, let's see. Let's move on to the next hot topic. Shenanigans. Let's go with uh, Rob B. Rob B, is this a truth, lie, or shenanigans? I know we've got some more election conversation here. Yeah, well, this is uh, truth. So basically some, uh, some results coming in from different parts of the country for different parties. Um, and it really, I just, it caught my eye because it really brought to light some of the, uh, how massive the culture clash is between the Democrats and the Republicans at this point. Um, 
Let's see, what do you got queued up for me first here, Neo? All right, so Sarah McBride uh, became the first openly transgendered U.S. Senator. Uh, she's a Democratic representative uh, in uh, Delaware, and she has been a staunch advocate for years in the LGBT and trans community. Uh, she's established several uh, institutions, or she's worked with a lot of organizations. Uh, Equity uh, Delaware is one of them. Uh, her deceased husband, Andrew Prey, was also an advocate for trans rights, uh, and they were married in 2014, and four days later, unfortunately, uh, her husband died of uh, cancer. Mm. But the McBride family has been very, very involved uh, in protecting Delawareans from discrimination on the basis of gender identity and expression and employment, uh, housing, insurance, uh, public accommodations. And due to her hard work and diligence, she has claimed a Senate seat. So absolute kudos to uh, Sarah McBride. And in the midterms, the... there was another, wasn't there a, a, another House representative who was uh, the first openly transgender House representative? I think she was in Virginia. Um, I'll look that up while you're talking. Yeah, there, there. I'll, look, I'll look that up while you're talking, but go ahead. Yeah, if you could queue up uh, the uh, the other one for me. <laughs> oh yeah, and, right. Yeah, because we we so, did we talked about this young lady. This is a, a great picture. Uh, it's uh, this is Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, she's a Republican representative. Was elected to the House of Representatives, and this is a, a, this is a right wing job. And some of the news outlets are reporting this as. QAnon scoring its first national political victory because Marjorie Taylor does adhere to some of the QAnon ideology. She has made many racist statements. There's a whole slew of videos out there where she talks about the Islamic invasion into government offices, how black and Hispanic men are held back by gangs and drug deals. She's made anti-Semitic comments even saying ridiculous things like racism doesn't exist in America. So, I mean, if this doesn't highlight the culture divide between Republican and Democratic supporters, I really don't know what would. Yeah. So I guess the first question I have for my co-host is, does the difference between these two candidates accurately represent the culture divide between Republican and Democratic supporters, race issues aside? I'll start. Uh, I'd say absolutely, actually. Um, it's pretty well. I mean, there are moderates on both sides, obviously. Um, but if we're talking spectrum, that is the spectrum. You know, if we're talking transgender, gay rights, um, democratic socialism, um, you know, that's one side of the spectrum. And then the other spectrum is racism, um, gun rights, uh, conspiracy theories. I mean, they're, they're conspiracy theories on both sides, so. but uh, everybody has those uh, on either side. But yeah, I mean, I, I think it is the divide. I, I think that is the spectrum that, that's opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, but one is, I, I would say one is a little more positive than the other. <laughs> given. That's a given. <laughs> I think, I, I think um, yeah, it speaks to the divide, but I also think it highlights the um, level of opportunity that you have in this country. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone has the opportunity to have a voice. Yeah. You have someone who is trans transgender on this side, and you have someone who is from QAnon, who is um, very conservative, white ring, white, right wing, um, not progressive and is basically of the mindset that white is the only way but they still have a voice in this country they can still assume office in this country so i think that works to the disadvantage of the conservatives and the white because you have a lot of people on the conservative side saying that you know we are being you know fleshed out we no longer have a voice we no longer have any say in this new america and it's like no here you are with a perfect example yep. that you still have a following. You still have an opportunity to um, seek office, to be elected to office, whether it's right or wrong. And so in, in a weird way, even though obviously I am against 
you know, this particular candidate and their views and their ideologies. And the we in a weird way, it elevates or showcases the beauty of America. And the fact that everyone has a voice, not everyone may agree with your voice, but everyone has that opportunity to come forward and say, listen, my voice needs to be heard. This is my ideology. These are my beliefs. I do have people who follow me and we need to be heard and represented. Yep. Now, am I going to follow that mf -er? Absolutely not. <laughs> mf -er. Um, but that, that, that's America. Like, you know, in, in other countries, one, there wouldn't even be the opportunity to have so many candidates from that's different true. backgrounds, different mm -hmm. cultures. And so I think that's something that needs to be celebrated here. Um, yeah, we do need to put a right, you know, kind of a tight rein on some of the messages that they put out. Um, especially if they are advocating for violence. Um, but it speaks to how this country can and will give you the opportunity if you step up. Yep. What do you think, Robbie? Oh, I just want to say real quick. So um, I said that there was a transgender House representative. It was actually Virginia House of Delegates, Danica Rome. Um, so... Mm -hmm in Virginia, uh, but Virginia State House Delegate. All right, go ahead, Harvey. Yeah, and really just at a quick glance, uh, Liz, uh, because you made an interesting comment about how, you know, only in America, it's something that should be celebrated. Uh, there are a number of trans politicians uh, it, that can be found uh, internationally in several de democratic processes. <laughs> so I, I, I think it's wonderful that they're getting representation because they have absolutely suffered from underrepresentation. Uh, so I, I, it, it's a good. But it's not thing only in America, happen. is what you're saying. I... No, <laughs> and it's it's good to see it happening in America. It is good, absolutely. But Rob, that also speaks to you know um, the wealth of information because we don't hear about that here. We don't hear about transgender candidates or transgender people who are in office in other countries like that's not a conversation that happens here at all um and so maybe maybe this is the first step you know to making that a part of a normal conversation like whether you believe or you believe in who they are what they represent they are still here they are still part of our um, citizenship here. They're still part of our community here. They pay taxes, they live here, and they need to be represented. And so, yeah, we don't we don't hear about that at all here, yeah. ever. No. One quick question as we're wrapping down. Do you think that Republicans would cast their ballots for someone like Sarah McBride? I think there are some Republicans that would, yes. I mean, you know, you remember we still got those Republicans that are in the closet mm -hmm. that are hiding. It's true. Um, mm -hmm. So they might they might cast the ballot, you know, um, in secret. But do I think that they will be, you know, in in the spotlight in front of the cameras? Do I think they would be in the House, you know, arguing for bills that support transgender rights? No. The problem is catering to their base. I mean, that, that's the biggest problem. There may actually be individuals that would do that, but as long as they have to cater to their base, the people that elected them, you know, those people are not going to come out and, and, and openly support that. Um, anyway, um, so let's go to Gianni. See what's happening online, Gianni. I think you're muted. We can't hear you, Gianni. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. No right. problem. Okay, so um, I was saying that Mike Winter said in Delaware, they have a weird mix of fiscally conservative um, rich folks and LGBTQ folks. Mm. Mm. True. Mm. That's Jacqueline Robinson said, um, find people on both sides. <laughs> that's, that's <funny. laughs> and then also um oh the comments are going by fast 
<laughs> Take your time. I'm watching Rick, Rick Santorum being ass as he normally is on CNN. Yeah, I can't even. I stop. I can't watch him sometimes. Yeah. And then we have. Um... Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, I'm going back to what um, Jose said. She said, it's so schoolyard bully. I'd like to meet up with Trump at the monkey bars. <laughs> Jose, rolling hard. You got her back, Rob You got her back, Rob I, I almost got her back. All right. Thank you, Gianni. No, uh, All right. Let's get into our final hot topic. Truth, Z. lies, shenanigans. There's truth, lies, shenanigans. What am I discussing? Are you, am I discussing Kanye? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Woo! And I, I won't say because, you know, Neo takes such offense to my other name for Kanye. <laughs> so I won't bring that out this evening. Um, but Kanye West, remember, everyone, this is shenanigans, I guess. Um, Kanye West, everyone, remember, he decided that he was going to run for president also. So he was seeking, he was looking to be on the ballot as a presidential candidate. Um, he was denied in most states. I think he was on the ballot in maybe what? I think because he was too late. Yeah. 10 states out of Mm -hmm. 50, too late, but also not only too late, but didn't care to try to make himself eligible. Yeah. Like, you know, these states told him, you, this is your deadline. You, you have to get your paperwork in. And he did, did nothing. Instead, he decided, you know, to take the Trump way and just go to Twitter and bitch and moan there. But, you know, Twitter is not the government, people. Like, you still have to. Ayanna you know, called it out for you. You still have to follow the processes. Yeah. Thank you, Yana. Thank you, Yana girl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Kanye. Yeah was on the ballot um, in California, but not as president. Kanye appeared on the ballot in California as vice president. At the same time where he voted in Wyoming, again, where he wasn't on the ballot, he wrote his name in, in Wyoming. He legitimately was not supposed to be on the ballot in California, but another group put him on the ballot as a vice president in California, which he didn't like. He thought it was, you know, very offensive offensive, and um, against everything that he called for. The name of the group was the American Independent Party. Hmm. But what do you guys think about this, Mr. Kanye? And let, for the record, Kanye, for the state that he was on the ballot, Kanye received 60,000 votes nationwide really? for president of the United States. 60,000 votes nationwide. Hmm. Yeah. I'll let you well, start. Well, how do you feel about that? No, Neil, how do you feel about that? About how Kanye? Do you 60, yeah. How do you I'm feel so, about that? 60,000, I'm shocked, actually. I mean... I, I, I figured he was going to get some votes. I mean, there's going to be people that are going to do there. I mean, that are going to vote for him. But I, 60,000 seems like a lot to me. Um, I'm wondering where they came from. Maybe they, they, it's probably California or something like that, or one of the major cities, or who knows. But uh, <laughs> cause, well, I guess he was on the ballot for what, California. I think he made it in. He was, no, he was, he was not on the ballot in California. Oh, he was not. For president. Okay. No, no, he was for vice president though. For vice president, yes. But for president, he was on in, uh, I think, what North Carolina. Did he make it into North Carolina? There was a few, but uh, yeah, sixty thousand seems like a surprise. I am shocked, actually. I, I really thought that he would, maybe two thousand. <laughs> but... Rob, you surprised sixty thousand? No. No, I'm not surprised by anything that happens electorally. When it's crazy shenanigans that happen, it uh, it doesn't surprise me that. And you know what? I can absolutely picture someone who may have eaten too many brownies going down and going. <laughs> I just voted for too many Kanye. <laughs> like, why do you even go vote at that point? But also too, where is the Kardashian factor? Like, you know, he has a huge following based on um, whom he's married to. Um, the 
voyeurism queen in this country. She don't do anything else but, you know, highlight herself. Um, but Kim Kardashian, there are a lot of Kardashian fans in this country. And so by word, by extinction, he has potential fans, people who follow him, who will vote for for him yeah. because of his wife. She has been uh, actually, you know, kind of quiet throughout this entire process. But what we did learn, and this is what people need to pay attention to when you are voting for someone, Kanye acknowledged this is his first time voting ever. Mm. Why on earth would you vote for president, for someone who is, this is this, their first time voting in a general election? So they have not been like Ice Cube. Cube, we see you. Because I don't even think Cube worked this time. Cube. <laughs> before 2020. So why are we listening or even considering the ideology yeah. of these people who have not been a part of the political process in this country, making decisions for us in this country before now? I, like, I wanna... don't come asking me for my vote at the 11th hour and you ain't vote. I first voted when I was 18 years old, absentee ballot in, I was in Finland, 1992, Bill Clinton. I was in Finland, absentee ballot, 18 years old. If I can do that in another country, you can do that living here yeah. with all of your privilege. Yeah. And so don't, don't, Thank don't you. come at me with this BS. Don't I found your, I, I found the votes for, uh, for your boy. So apparently he got the most votes in Tennessee, 10,000 votes in Tennessee. Uh, Arkansas, he got 4,000. Colorado, 6,000. Idaho, 3,000. These are all like red states, though. He did take away 7,000 in Minnesota, though. Colorado, hey, voted blue this time. They did vote blue. They did vote blue. Colorado and Minnesota ultimately voted mm -hmm. blue. Everyone else, every every other of Vermont, they got 1,200. You got 1,200 in Vermont. So. I was very excited about Colorado because, you know, I went to undergrad in Colorado, University of Colorado. I have a lot of beloved friends, family still there. So I was happy. And Colorado flipped a Senate seat. So, yes, I was very <laughs> happy about my Colorado folks. The mountains, the mountains are good, people. That mountain air, that mountain air. <laughs> The mountain area is nice in Colorado. I got it. I do, I do enjoy some Colorado mountain air. But did you have any final thoughts, Robbie? No, I think we've really covered this well. It's uh... all right, Johnny. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead, Robbie. Yeah, no, no, I was going to say let, let's let's get some comments. All right, Johnny, what we got? Hey guys. Okay, so um, Jacqueline Robinson asked, were these right in vote? Um, on behalf of the Kanye, um, no, this was, he was actually on the ballot. Yeah. He was actually on the ballot. So he, these were the few states that he actually got on the ballot. So Arkansas, Colorado, Idaho, Iowa, Kentucky, yeah. these Louisiana. Were probably the college, these yep. were probably the college dropouts yeah. that he talked about in Minnesota, that Minnesota, Mississippi, Oklahoma, <laughs> Tennessee, Utah, and Vermont. That's college got dropouts. Yeah. Mike Winter says Bama's. He was on the ballot in 12 states, as we know, and then he had 10K in Tennessee. Um, Jacqueline Robinson also said, how appropriate, given that we have a reality TV show starring squatting in the people's house. <laughs> <What? laughs> sister. Um, sister. Ayana <laughs> said, on behalf of Kim K, she's quiet because she's too busy getting smart for both of them with her virtual law degree. Oh, she got a virtual law degree? I hadn't heard that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's, That's news, she's, news to me. She's trying to be a lawyer. She's trying to be a lawyer. Oh, okay. Yep. Like her dad? Yeah. <laughs> not like yeah. her dad. Not, her dad was legitimate. She is not like her dad. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and then Marjorie it? also said, are you kidding me? Tennessee voted for Kanye? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and 10,000 people. Right? <laughs> That's a lot. Come on. Camille Burstman Sommer, if you're watching, what's up with your state, girl? What's up with your state? <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, Gianni. All right, so that's it for Hot Topics. Truth, lies, shenanigans.
Great hot topics, guys. Let's go ahead and jump right on into our game show. Close it out with some fun. Close it out with some fun. You about to lose your job. Get this there. <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> I'll play that in a little bit. All right. <laughs> I'll make sure we're playing before we go out. <laughs> All right. For today's game, we've got 80s movie of trivia. I had this on my uh, page today and we were doing 80s movies. So I wanted to bring it here. Do some 80s movie trivia. All, All right. right. So. Round Robin style, I read off a trivia question and the multiple choice answer. And if you get it right, you get a point. You get it wrong, you get a buzz. And the person with the most points at the end of the game gets our final thought. All right, let me bring Johnny back in. Johnny, you got the score for us? I got it. All right, let me bring that back up. Got my eye on you, Rob. Got my right. eye on you, So Bob. for example, here's our sample question. Which of these 80s films was directed by Steven Spielberg, Gremlins, Poltergeist, Always, or The Goonies? Any guesses real quick? Goonies. What's your guess, Lizzie? The Goonies. <laughs> Always. Oh. <laughs> oh, so this is going to be tough. I don't know what that is. Always. I don't know what that is. I have never heard of it. I had never heard of it. I don't, I don't know that one either. <laughs> All right, here we go. Which of these movies was released in the 1980s? Back to the Future Part 3, Dead Poet Society, Pretty Woman, Total Recall. Lizzie? Oh, shit. Um, Total Recall. Let's see. I think you might be right. Nope, Dead Poet Society. <laughs> All right, Rob B. All right, this, this is a fun one. How many Police Academy movies were there in the 1980s? Three, four, five, or six? Ten. Five. <laughs> five, let's see. Whoops, I said six by accident, but you got it wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I clicked six by accident, but you got it. All I'm right, my, my turn. Uh, let's see. Which of these quotes is not a line of dialogue from the 1985? No, this is Commando. Yeah. What do you say? I lied. I let him go. I had to spit. Don't disturb my friend. He's dead. Tired. I'm going to say don't disturb my friend. He's dead. Tired because he always has these one liners. And all right, these are tough. All right, all clearly, we don't know much about 80s movies. Let's go. Goose all right. eggs all around. Give me this game. Okay. All right, Lizzie, which of these films does not feature a song by Kenny Loggins? Caddyshack, Footloose, Beverly Hills Cop, or Top Gun? By Kenny Loggins. To the danger zone. Okay. Um, what were the, I, you know, you cut down my, my, I can't see. What are the options again? Caddyshack, the... Footloose, Beverly Hills Cop, or Top Gun? Let me see, I'm going to bring you back up. I'm going to say Beverly Hills Cop. I think you might be right, actually. Yes. All right, Lizzie. Nice. Good job. All right. Rob B. According to school secretary Grace, why do sportos, the motorheads, geeks, sluts, bloods, wasteoids, dweebies, and, <laughs> and I don't think we can say that word, d-heads, all Dick adore. Dickheads. Okay. okay, well, yeah, it's probably, it's probably okay to say. <laughs> <laughs> all adore Ferris Bueller. They think he has a, he's a cool dude. They think he's a righteous dude. They think he's a sweet dude. They think he might be single. <laughs> I think it's B, righteous dude. B, they think he's a righteous. That is correct. Ding, 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 ding. All right. See if I can get one. All right. In Flash Gordon 1980, how many hours did the eponymous thank you hero have to save the Earth, <laughs> according to Dale Arden? 13 hours, 14 hours, 24 hours. Or 48 hours. I never watched Flash Gordon. I watched it and out. I don't remember. I actually watched Flash Gordon. Um, 
How many hours? I'm just going to take a guess. I'm going to say 14. Yes! <laughs> nice. got it right. <laughs> he cheated. He All right. Cheated, so we got one point each. All right. Lizzie, let's see if we can break this tie. Let's we'll see who wins this game. All right. Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey starred together in Dirty Dancing and one other 80s movie. Name it. Red Dawn, Steel Dawn, Young Blood, or Ferris Bueller's Day Off. What? I've never Patrick... heard of those other movies. You've never heard of what? what? You've never heard of Red Dawn? Red Dawn, Girl. Ferris Bueller. I've heard of Ferris Bueller. Are those other say. movies? Can you repeat them? Not Ferris yes. Bueller, but what? Red Dawn, Steel Dawn, Young Blood, Ferris Bueller's Days Off. I mean, I guess Red Dawn. Oh, Kevin <laughs> Daxon gave it to you. Look at that. <laughs> Good job, Kevin. <laughs> that is correct. All right. All right, it's going to come down to this, Rob V. Jennifer Aniston made her film debut in let, which... Let me stop you right there. The Leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even an option. What? <laughs> Damn. All right, read, read the options to me. <laughs> in which sci-fi movie? Explorers, Mac and Me, E.T., or Ghostbusters? I think I know this one. Who are you going to call? Who are you going to first two? First... Two are Explorers, Mac and Me, E.T., or Ghostbusters. Made her film debut. Jennifer Mac and Me. That is correct. (laughs) Nice. All right. This is the last one for me. Who played Skeletor, the Masters of the Universe movie? (laughs) Jack Nicholson, Val Kilmer, Frank (laughs) Langella, or Christopher Lee? Wait, who played who? Skeletor? Skeletor. Yeah. Nicholson. Behind I that see, yellow that... mask. Oh, yes. It's either Christopher Lee or Val Kilmer. I know it's not Nicholson or Langella. Uh, I'm going Christopher Lee. Langella. It was Langella? Oh, all right. So, this is the last question. Fastest person to say it. Who directed Howard the Duck movie? George Lucas, Ron Howard, Willard Hutt, Ron or Howard. Francis Ford Coppola? Who? Ron Howard. What do you say, Lizzie? He said it first, if, you, if you're saying Ron Howard. That's what I was going to say, but yeah. Uh, he said it first, and I think that's the right answer. Actually. Oh, both yeah. wrong. Really oh. All right, last one. Come on, we're going to try to get this. Otherwise, uh, we're going to let Gianni pick. All right. Which of these 80s Westerns features a split-second cameo from Tom Cruise? Young Guns, Pale Riders, Silverado, or Long Riders? First one to say it. Young Guns. What you got, Lizzie? Number two. Hell Rider? Young Guns is correct. Yay! Yeah. Good job, Rob B. Rob B with the win. Both <laughs> truth. I love Young Guns. <laughs> All right, let's get our shout outs in real quick. All right, Lizzie, shout out. Shout out to America, everyone who voted, everyone who stuck through this process. Again, this is for you. This isn't a TV movie. This isn't a concert or anything that is hyped up in Hollywood. This is reality. So shout out to you for voting, for paying attention, for being included in this process. And let's keep it going. It doesn't end here. Yeah. We got to keep our foot mm-hmm. on the gas pedals. So let's keep going. Whoop, whoop, to a better America. To a better America. All right, Robbie. Shout out. I like that. Shout out to my number one fan and supporter, Jose, who helps me <laughs> behind the scenes day in and day out. So thank you very much, Joe, for all of your help and support. Shout out to our audience, our fans. Uh, thank you so much for being part of the show. And like Liz said, shout out to everyone that went out and voted. This is your day. And, uh, you know, the voices will be heard. Ultimately, the voices will be heard. My shout out. My shout out goes out to my sister, Rupka. She's going to be actually helping us with some stuff on the show. So she's she's going to be helping out. So thank you, Rupka. I'll be talking to you tomorrow. (laughs) All right. That's good. So thank you very much, guys. It's actually a great show today. Great show today. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed it with you. 
So, before we uh, close out, I'd like to thank you guys for joining us. We hope you maybe learned something or gained a new perspective. We even got some things off your chest. This has been a rough time up until now, hopefully. We got some new things going on. Please don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe at TLS Live Show if you already haven't. And if you missed any of today's episode, check out our clips online on YouTube and Facebook tomorrow for you to share out. Remember, subscribe to iTunes, Spotify, Google, Alexa, wherever you listen to your podcast. Make sure you're listening to Truth, Lies, Shenanigans, and subscribe. Um, I got my computer back, y'all. Tweet me, tweet me. Tweet me. Oh, yeah, get, get those tweets out. All right, and make sure you check out our next show on the actual Sunday, not today, Sunday, at 4 p.m., <laughs> We'll have a special guest host as the witty Mark Gagne will be joining our crew to discuss all of our fun, hot topics. Coming back. All right, Rob B, you get the final thought for the day. Take us out. The final thought for the day. So, yes, I'm just going to keep going with the winds of change appear to be blowing in to the U.S. of A. Be cool to one another. Uh, it doesn't matter what the political divide is. It doesn't matter what the belief divide is. You're all Americans. You're one people. Let's just four years. Just start moving it in the right direction. Yeah. Rob, you've been listening to Scorpion. You've been listening to Scorpion Winds of Change. <laughs> I have not, but I like where your head's at. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We just gotta still turn one more. We gotta turn one more though, but we'll we'll see what we got. All right, thank you, Rob, Lizzie. Thank you, viewers. Have a great day. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. Truth, truth, lies, lies, lies.